uh, welcome everyone to uh, who's joined us today. We're really excited about this. Uh, a bit of the genesis about why we um, started up with this session uh, starting today with the first of three webinars, uh, we'll talk more about the other two toward the end of the program, is we're hearing about all the success that people are having with Wealthbox, Asimap, and Orion, especially all three together, which is really exciting. And we love talking to our advisors and how they're um, you know, having success with different programs. And uh, we're nicely tied together with these two folks here, uh, Orion and Wealthbox partners. So we decided to spin up a three-part series where we can talk a little bit more about our own products, uh, how advisors are having success uh, directly from the advisors themselves next week, and some really great uh, thought leadership from our uh, leaders on the final week. So again, more about that in a little bit. Uh, we are going to, um, just a couple logistics, we're recording today for those who uh, couldn't necessarily make it. We've had some reach outs already uh, if we're gonna be recording the session. Of course we will. And we love questions. So I already see some coming in, which is really exciting. If you have questions that you would like uh, to hear from either myself or our three presenters, uh, please answer the questions in the questions area, and we will take them throughout. We'll take them at the end. We're gonna keep this um, pretty laid back and relaxed and hear about our, our three great products today, but certainly get those questions in. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and um, let's get things kicked off. Here is our fabulous group of uh, presenters today. So I believe we might have Jeff on later for some questions as well from Orion, uh, but our main presenters here, we have um, Jamin from Wealthbox, Adam from Asset Map, and Eddie from Orion. So we're really excited to uh, hear from the groups today. And uh, again, get those questions into us as we get kicked off. Uh, we still have some folks joining us, but I think it would be great to get started. And uh, we're kicking things off today with Wealthbox. So it seems uh, appropriate to kick off with uh, where a lot of advisors get started in their tech stack with the CRM. And uh, we're going to get started in just a couple of slides here as an introduction. So, Jamin, you're up. All right. Well, thank you for the handoff, Allison. Hello, everyone. My name is Jamin Bishop, VP of Sales here at Wealthbox. Um, and just to give you a quick intro of Wealthbox, Wealthbox is a modern, easy to use CRM for financial advisors. And we, say, we usually say in our company, Wealthbox is CRM you'll actually enjoy. And so when our team built the product and continues to build the product, they build it through the framework of uh, the product attributes of being simple, yet powerful and beautiful. Allison, can you hit the next slide, please? All right. Um, so this is just a, a list of a handful of different features of Wealthbox. And, you know, I, I know that sometimes it's uh, a lot easier to show you these features in just a quick demo. So with that, let's just dive right into the live demo portion uh, of today's show. And I'll just take a few minutes here just to give you a quick speed demo and a rundown of Wealthbox. And Allison, can you share presenter control so I can share my screen here? All right, does everyone see all set? Okay? You got it? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so this is the main homepage of Wealthbox. And when you log in, it's gonna take you to the dashboard, all right? And so Wealthbox, if you're not familiar, again, easy to use CRM. We do complimentary migrations from any other CRM to get you started. And if you're curious after seeing this and you want more information, you can head over to wealthbox.com, click on that book a demo just to learn more or start a trial and see for yourself. Um, so let's just dive right in here. So if you see my mouse moving, you'll see on the left-hand side, I'm signed in as a firm called ABC Financial under the advisor persona, Brad Creedon over here on the top right. Going back over here to the left, this is the left-hand navigation panel, recently viewed records. Moving to the center column, this is the publisher tool. This is where you enter data into the CRM, whether it's notes or tasks or contacts, events or opportunities. So let's just say that I got off the phone with my client, Kevin Anderson, so we spoke about 401k. I'll go ahead and at mention my client. It's gonna uh, relate that, and you saw that from the at mention panel there. Click post, you're gonna see that note cascade down below into this activity stream. This activity stream component that you see here, that's essentially a live pulse of what's going on at your firm, at your practice. Tasks that are added, notes that are made, workflows that are in progress. So it's a great way to stay in touch with, with a live pulse of what's going on within your organization, within your client service team, versus maybe perhaps your, your other advisors that you work with. 
Now, moving on to the right-hand column here. This right-hand column is essentially your day at a glance. Any events on your calendar, you've got a two-way sync with Google Calendar and Outlook Calendar. Any tasks that are due that day or that week. Workflows that are in progress, and we've got a great workflow here that um, is a new client onboarding checklist, which includes importing the household from Asset Map and adding that specific accounts and linking them in Orion, and we'll get to that a little later. Um, and then below that, upcoming special birthdays and opportunities. So just a great way just to see your day at a glance. In today's demo, just keep in mind, I'm just doing this really high level. I'm not going to go into all the features. So we're going to skip a handful of these different uh, left-hand navigation panels as we continue the series um, of your advisor tech stack. We'll go into additional detail here about these other features um, for part two and part three. But for the purpose of today, just wanted to give you just a high level preview. So let's go into the contact record of Kevin Anderson, the record that I just added a note here. And you'll see a couple of things that I'll point out. So you'll see the contact card here. You've got a couple of tags associated, the household that Kevin is part of. And you see click to dial and click to email through the Wealthbox mail integration. So some really neat handy tools here that are available. Below that, that familiar publisher tool to add notes that you have. Then you have the activity stream below of all CRM activity that's happening with Kevin Anderson. Now, the handy part about Wealthbox, any notes that you add here, they automatically cascade to the household record. Um, so that the uh, so that and the main purpose of this feature is that anyone who adds a note or a task or an event on any members of the household, you know, Kevin's wife, Kevin's children all of those notes and activities cascade above to the central household record automatically. So really handy feature there. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, if you're onboarding Kevin Anderson and the Anderson family from being a prospect to a client. So I'm gonna launch here a workflow that I've, we've created here at Wealthbox it's called the new client onboarding checklist. And this includes the asset map and Orion steps in onboarding a new client. So I'll start this workflow here and you'll see that's pretty standard in terms of the, the steps that you have of, hey, you need to send the, the form package questionnaire, you need to send their risk tolerance link, you need to send an email for those completed forms, you need to open up those accounts in the custodian, um, and then down towards the bottom, importing that contact into asset map. And I know down the line we'll talk through those integrations as well as you know completing that client data in Orion and linking those accounts to the household to complete those billing next steps. So this is a example of a workflow process to fully onboard a client. Workflows in Wealthbox are any business processes that your advisory firm has to operate your business more efficiently. It can be in the form of you know a checklist or it could be in the form of a, a, a sequential workflow. One other thing that I wanted to quickly highlight here was with the Orion integration that we have, um, if you hit that Orion tab, the feature that you get is the account aggregation feature. So on the Anderson household, you will get an aggregated view of all accounts on this household, the types and the values. And then you also have the ability, if you wanted to run a performance report, you can click on that specific account and then it will single sign on right into Orion. Now, with that, I think now would be a good time just to transition here uh, and hand this off to uh, the next team. All right. That is me again, folks. So I know we're keeping things light and relaxed here. Um, there was a question that came in for Wealthbox, uh, so it might be a good time to, to get that one answered. So question came in from Ray. Is there a way to print historical notes? for just one client, German. Yes, there is. So if you go into the contact record at the top right, there's an actions button where then you can print. Um, you could also run a notes report for one client and you can toggle that notes report um, in a way where it just has that client's notes in a report and that's also printable as well. That's great. Thank you. Uh, again, guys, uh, definitely keep those questions coming in. Um, you know, certainly for any one of the groups, any one of the presenters, uh, we would be happy to tackle those uh, when it makes sense. So keep them coming. And I think next up, uh, we have a few slides for Adam. Adam, uh, were, are you able to see my screen there? Yeah, I can see your screen. Thanks, Allison. Thanks, John. Great. Um, sure. 
in terms of you know the value proposition of asset map for all these platforms there's no way we can go into all the details it's really to try to inform you as to where we sit where where we want to continue to invest um, over the next two sessions you're going to get more and more detail as you hear from other advisors uh, if you don't know asset map asset map was uh, an attempt to create years ago a visualization that depicted the entire household of where all their financial stuff was uh, and, and I'm going to show you a little bit about what we've released recently because there's some, some really new, exciting stuff that I know people have been waiting to see. Um, but if you remember if, or understand where the real intent was, it was to try to literally put everything on one page. And then also, if we could do financial planning, also do it on one page. <laughs> right? So a two-page output board versus 80 of what we were traditionally used to for many years um, was our big goal. It wasn't an easy um, lift. Uh, believe it or not, going simpler is harder. And if you could switch to the next page, um, most advisors use Asset Map as an as a, an engagement tool. They use it to explore, to do fact finding, to validate what's going on, educate clients as to what they have, what they don't have, what's missing, where they see gaps, where it's an obvious read of an, an X-ray, and of course, ultimately to elevate their condition, right? Leave them in a better place than we found them. Um, with that, why don't I? Um, what's uh, What's our next slide, actually, Allison? Because uh, do we have any more slides? Yeah, yeah one more it. slide. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> I, it's not, I don't control the, the deck, so it's hard to say. Um, there's really, <laughs> the question you get, this is probably going to pre answer a bunch of people's questions. How do you actually do this? How do you get data in Asset Map? Well, clearly, there's a, there's a lot of advisors building this live with, uh, with their clients. I'll show you an aspect of that or they're using our direct to, to prospect a profiler. Literally, you could send a link to people they could open on their phone in 15 minutes, do a full fact find. Um, for those people we have no integrations or no data on, um, that's a fantastic way to start the engagement flow and to onboard. Um, and then of course we integrate with many of our friends represented here. So um, taking different aspects of what they do great uh, and displaying them in the asset map or populating it. So what's, uh, what's one make me presenter and I'll show some of the cool stuff that we're doing. Yeah. Thanks, Alice. Here it comes. Showing my screen. Do you see my screen? What do you see? Does it have asset map on? We see. We sure do. Okay, great, awesome. And do you see me say? Do you do you, do you see this smiley face? Do you see that? <laughs> okay, great. Sure do. Right, so we know it's working. That's my test these days because I don't. You could be looking at one of my screen. <laughs> Um, the, the real key to Asset Map as a platform was to try to make speed of accessibility. You know, if you've been in the field, uh, certainly for as long as I have, over 20 years, one of the things that, that we need to, that there's an expectation from our clients is to be up to speed on what's going on in the life. And you, what you just saw with wealth boxes, there's an enormous amount of data we collect, certainly over time, on our clients. We need to get to the data we need when we need it, right? We don't want to be fumbling around. Um, in the context of providing holistic advice, uh, one of the things that we were most concerned with is how does somebody who's on the phone uh, with us literally, and I'm, I'm in live presentation, this is a live server, not, not demo, how do I get acclimated on what's going on in this household literally in just seconds, right? Who's involved in the household, Tim and Christine and their two kids that are, what are their ages and, and what about grandma who's involved and their business partner and the, uh, an advisor that they keep that's part of their household and they have companies and their foundations, they have trusts. People have all kinds of complexity that they've acquired over time. We need to be aware of that. So the key in the first aspect of asset map is to understand who's part of the household. Uh, and of course, the reason why we're doing pretty much anything is because of these people. And from a customer centricity perspective, right? Customers are in the middle and in most balance sheets, most people tend to, we tend to lose them, right? They might wanna know a specific value of an account. Awesome, I can get that fast from either of our partners. But if I want to talk about it in context to a bunch of other stuff, for example, let's say I manage this account, but I, I don't manage these accounts. I want permission to talk about them, even if they're not aggregated, right? How are they doing? Why do we have so many of these? Can we consolidate this? Are these performing? Boy, they, what's going on with this inheritance? And gosh, we have all these banking accounts. How's that working, right? The, the key that we found for years is to try to create a presentation layer where the advisor and the client actually interact, usually in an annual review or that early engagement of advice, and to create a framework where we're always looking at the same thing. And this is a family tree, top of a balance sheet, mushed together with an income statement, combined with a policy statement, because we include insurances as well. So the key here is, despite my crazy doodles, 
um, was to create an environment where as an advisor, not only could we work in paper face-to-face -face and print this out, but we could also do what? We could draw all over our screen. And, and with our embedded drawing tools, I'm literally just clicking a couple buttons and I'm native on any platform, iPad, Mac, um, iOS, whatever. I can literally draw and I can, I can ask questions of what's here, what's missing, does this deserve here, should we move it, and start educating the way that we all got educated in school behind a blackboard. Okay, so that's that's the real intent of Asset Map today. If you have seen Asset Map before, you might notice that this thing is a lot slicker than it used to be. We did a huge refresh over the last year that rolled out just a couple of weeks ago even. It was an attempt to actually get to speed. So I'm actually looking, I'm pulling live data, live financial planning, literally just by clicking. And I'm showing that to you, not because you can follow along, but you can see how fast it is to get to information and get to the view you want, and then get it into a PDF and get it into somebody's hands fast. That's the key. So speed of engagement, the fact everybody's got attention deficit disorder, nobody has any patience, best I can tell. The wealthier they are, the less they have capacity for paper reports, uh, and they wanna get to the, the bottom line really fast. Um, many of you didn't actually know that we've been doing financial planning for many years. And if you follow T3, we recently got great accolade for financial planning uh, from our user base. Um, but one of the things that we wanted to try to figure out is, could we actually inform somebody and keep up to track um, all of their funding relative to goals uh, in one environment and simply communicate that they basically are either undersaved or underbanked or maybe potentially under earning for their goals of which at any point in time, they're funded at to some degree. Retirement, education, loss of life, disability, long-term care. Those should not be a surprise to us, right? We should be able to know how healthy our clients are to self-fund these events. And of course, for those of us that are a little bit uh, techno geeks uh, that want to see, you know, what, what those cash flows look like, we've actually embedded both goal-based and cash flow um, uh, financial planning in the same environment, working together, running side by side. For those of us that want to look at it this way or that way, um, but I think the key is, is that we really believe that financial planning is getting commoditized. You have to actually deliver it to everybody. It just it has to be fast and competent. Um, and so that's really what we tend to be focusing on. With respect to those integrations, um, one of the things we've been really kind of mindful of is, is how do you create speed of access to deeper insight? And that's why all of these instruments, depending upon how I'm looking at this family, if I'm pulling this information from anyone, whether it's household information from Wealthbox, I can deep link right into Wealthbox um, just by clicking on any of the people. Um, I actually don't have this enabled right now for this demo, um, but I can actually jump right to the record in, in Wealthbox. I could do the same thing in Orion. I can click on any of these boxes if it's sourced from Orion, and I can get not only the data, but I can get insights from their awesome widgets tab where I can see performance and allocation. So we'll share some of this at the next couple moments or events we're doing. Um, but I think the takeaway for all of you that are that are looking at Asset Map is that we're really an engagement layer for where you interact uh, with your client to try to compress that information to a 30,000 foot view. Um, and I hope that that's uh, hope that's helpful in understanding what we're doing today. Well, that's more to come, of course. I've always have a huge product roadmap, which we'll hope to share over the next couple sessions. Allison. Adam, one question. Yeah, one yeah. question came in that you could address before we uh, pass it on over to Eddie. Um, touch a bit on how the client's able to help uh, get some information into Asset Map, if you would. Yeah, sure. Um, one of the things that's been um, of high demand these days is a concept called um, discovery. And discovery was the idea that we want to offload some high-level work to prospects, not so much that they get overwhelmed and they're thinking, oh, I can't find those statements and they just don't do it at all, but that they would actually start a process where they would receive I'm just going to make up some people. If I, if I know I'm meeting Kate and Steve, I can send them an email and they would receive something that looks like this and it would work on their phone and they could literally just start creating this in 15 minutes. They could do a full fact find down from the people to their instruments. Um, and uh, basically they can do this obviously in a touch environment. So you can see very quickly that they can start to put in information of stuff that they have uh, in a very non-judgmental way, and I've already built an asset map, by the way. Based upon all this information, I've got the guts of a, of a full asset map. Of course, they could, they could indicate some of this information, um, and I don't want to take you through all of it, 
but the key is that when we make it simple and gamified enough, but not not simplistic, right? If it's too simplistic, then people think this is not credible. Um, I've literally just built an asset map for them, what they care about. I'm going to skip this, uh, and you can see how easy it is to collect data. You can do this at scale. In other words, you can do this for thousands of people at a time if you want to do full onboard um, inbound lead generation, or you can send it specifically uh, to an individual. Uh, when you want and, and just jump right to it. So that's really an effective way to offload some of the high level fact find pre, let's say discovery meeting um, to the client. And, and literally it's just gonna build a map based upon that data. Now I can sync this with Wealthbox uh, and, I can, uh, and I can bring over other information and build it out over time as we evolve our data on the client. Great, thank you. Yep. A couple questions coming in uh, just about um, the integrations, which, you know, you guys will open it up to all three of you uh, after mm -hmm. uh, Orion's piece. Um, in just a second, I'm going to pass it on over uh, to Eddie. And again, uh, folks, type your questions in. We love getting them and uh, great so far. So I'm going to grab control back here, Adam, Please. if that's okay. And um, Eddie, once you can see your slides, uh, you go ahead and uh, tell us a bit about Orion and what you guys have going on. Sounds great. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, you know, I think really what's uh, what's important here as we get into the a little bit more about Orion is really the the uh, the connectivity that we are able to provide. Uh, you know, for an investment advisory firm, or even you as an individual advisor working within uh, you know within an office. Um, just real quickly, just a little bit about the Orion brand family. We, we're really comprised of three, you know, distinct organizations within Orion, but they've all really worked together hand in hand. And I think this really describes the advisor journey as you're going through your life cycle, right, as a firm, what's going to best fit the needs of, of what you're looking for. Um, when we look at Orion Advisor Tech, that's really our foundational uh, technology company. It's uh, ultimately what supports the uh, you know, open architecture TAMP, as well as the investment management uh, side of the house. But uh, when you when you consider Orion Tech, I'll, I'll get into some of the components of that here in a little bit. Um, but really think of that as your DIY experience, right? As an advisor, if you're wanting to run your own technology and wanting to kind of have that uh, a little bit more uh, autonomy in in the in your day to day, uh, then you know the technology component is a great piece for uh, for you to consider. As you get into, let's say, maybe wanting to scale and uh, uh, drive some efficiency and, and maybe keep uh, overhead down, you know, I think really looking at the open architecture TAMP is a, is a great place to go uh, because not only can it support your own, you know, advisor uh, models, but it also provides a uh, multi-strategist, you know, uh, you know, curated uh, collection of, of uh, you know, really top tier investment managers. And then they have a service layer. Uh, over the top of that that helps you with the you know account onboarding and servicing component. And then onto the Brinker Capital Investments, which is really a, a very uh, strategic and uh, you know uh, core player for your office, really becoming an extension, uh, whether it's to the capacity of an OCIO support uh, or even into um, you know just the, uh, the the model allocations that they provide, uh, which are also available on the Orion Portfolio Solutions uh, uh, platform. Uh, additionally, and last is just as you're maybe navigating into some higher net worth uh, clientele, you know, the Brinker Capital Investments is a great solution to help you really, um, you know, close that that business because of their expertise and experience in being able to customize some of those portfolio needs, uh, the higher net worth your clients become. Allison, you want to switch to next? So when we look at the vision of Orion and really our mission, we we built it off of this four pillar approach of prospect, plan, invest, and achieve. And really, what we've designed is a very tech enabled fiduciary process that ultimately helps you, uh, you know, uh, win more clients and uh, connect the, you know, that advisor client journey uh, through one, uh, you know, easy to define yet uh, connected process that that will fit. Uh, really, your uh, your needs as a as a as an advisor. Um, we have a, a prospecting experience that I'll, I'll mention here briefly on the next slide. But uh, uh, whether it's done through integrations or through some of the technology that we can offer your your firm, helping you drive uh, prospects from uh, lead aspect 
right? Marketing, digital marketing content into that plan, going through that planning process and ultimately connecting the plan into the investment uh, experience. And so with the technology that we have at Orion, being able to deliver that connected uh, experience is really foundational to helping keep your clients in, you know, in a more um, uh, constructive uh, process. And then ultimately through that invest, you have the achieve component. And that's really where a lot of the operational uh, components and then the ongoing value that you're adding to a client uh, as you know they're bringing on new life situations, maybe exposing more uh, of their assets uh, to you. Um, you know, that achieve component helps you with that reporting. Also, you want to switch to the next slide. And so at the end, you know, there's a lot of these components of the, from the technology perspective that uh, I'll kind of close here on. We've got, uh, you know, areas that will ultimately help you define your processes and your procedures around marketing, uh, the financial planning and investment management platform solutions. Uh, so we have a model marketplace. If you're not quite ready to go to the full service TAMP, uh, you can access some of those uh, similar models and strategies. Uh, natively through the technology, and then allow you to apply those into either uh, an SMA or UMA type approach. Um, we have a, a very robust uh, trading technology that takes it from a, you know, that mass affluent all the way into the, you know, tax transition and ta uh, tax aware uh, trading scenarios. Um, the client experience is another great component that really helps create continuity between your advisor client journey. And then moving into some of the compliance components that really help support more of your back office staff needs. Uh, so by being able to provide, you know, ADB reporting and other oversight and audit reports that help your CCO and your your compliance teams really stay on top of what's going on in your in your business. Some of the foundational components, though, Orion was was started on the reporting, this billing and data services, and so those continue to expand and grow. And we've made some great strides to improve that and help make sure that you're at, able to stay at that digital forefront of the uh, of that client experience. And last, uh, somewhat often overlooked that many firms don't realize is that uh, the business intelligence component. So one of the ways in which we help your firm understand what's going on holistically across your wealth management practice is by being able to show you um, views into your, into your book of business. I help you understand like where your clients are at from a distribution standpoint, right? Um, and then helping you understand, you know, revenue flows and asset allocation across, you know, multiple fronts. Um, so really, you know, when you when you consider what many advisors are coming to Orion for, it's for this, you know, core technology offering, but then being able to create this connected experience. And I think that's really when we focus on the partnerships that we have, you know, with uh, with Asset Map and Wealthbox, you're really able to start seeing that as this data becomes more um, you know, homogenized uh, it, between like, let's say from the a portfolio side, we can now easily transition that data into third party uh, programs that allow you to operate in the most effective way and that best uh, communicates your value proposition to the client. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna save from doing any live demos uh, at this point, you know, we can get into some of those as we go, uh, go throughout the next couple sessions. But uh, just as an introduction and, and the, the, the partnership opportunities there, you know, we wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of the of the way that you know Orion, um, you know Asset Map and Wealthbox really uh, operate as a technology company. That's great. Um, we do have one question, uh, Ed, that is uh, directed uh, right to uh, Orion, and some really cool questions coming in um, as well, and some suggestions. So uh, for you, Eddie, uh, can Orion integrate information on annuities as well as investment accounts? Yes, that's a terrific question. Uh, so I think that came in from Natalie here. Uh, so Natalie, yes, so Orion can uh, aggregate uh, and reconcile annuity data in, in addition to uh, you know your investment accounts, and then we can pipe that data into other programs. So you know if that's something that you're interested in, uh, highly recommend uh, you know if, if you're an existing uh, uh, firm with with Orion, uh, you can contact your your uh, uh, support team. Uh, if not, otherwise you can you can reach out and we can connect on the um, to kind of go through any any additional questions you might have. That's great. Um, so, uh, gentlemen and Adam, um, so let's bring everybody back into the conversation here. We have a couple more questions to get to. Anything else uh, you two would like to add since we've um, gotten through uh, kind of all the the product descriptions here? 
Yeah, sure. I think um, the, the thing I would add on our side is just uh, one thing I forgot to mention is just in terms of how to get started. And so if folks are interested, we do offer a 30 day free trial. And if you're not familiar with Wealthbox, you can start that at wealthbox.com. Okay, great. Very good. Always important information. Adam, how about you? Anything uh, that stands out that you'd like to, to cover additionally before we get to some more questions? We don't offer any 30 day trial. <laughs> <laughs> We put so much work up front. Is that what you want to add? Yeah. Yeah, that's my no, but we do we do a we do a 30 day money back guarantee. Um, but no, I, I think the the bottom line is that it, that's what's so interesting watching my peers also and being a fellow advisor for many years is that these these services are so critical and for portfolio management and the integrated services that Orion have built and the CRM is just a core complement. And then Azimap is this kind of like, you know, weird kind of glue in a, in a strange way for that presentation layer. Um, these have become, these are, you can really run your practice on these three things alone in many ways. Um, so it's, it's, I think it's really important because it will start to define the process that you build for yourself. And of course, the people you bring into your firm, not only other advisors, but staff that, that kind of indoctrinating them with a process that you start is gonna have an implication down the line for households and advisors for many years. So you have to be really intentional about this. One of the things I have seen from other advisors is this, you know, like you guys can do so much, but I can only execute 20, 30% of the value proposition, which is still valuable. Um, how do we, how do people, I'm gonna ask my peers this, how do people learn, how do our advisors learn more about what they can do and how do they get more acclimated? What, what are you guys doing to help our advisors um, grow and use more of what you've built. I throw that to Eddie because you're, you're you're in front of me. There you go. <laughs> so so Adam, what you're asking is how how are we helping advisors grow and win more business? Well, no, how are they using more of your tools? So, like you have so much oh. functionality. How do how do how do I use more than just ten percent of what I really need? Right? How do I grow this so I can actually catalyze all the value you've built? Yeah, you know, I think that's a that's a really important question that most advisors probably face a dilemma with. And I think it's uh, it's kind of looking at what they want to run in-house versus what they want to outsource. And, you know, even when you consider Orion in that component of, you know, sitting really at the at the forefront as 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 well as the CRM, you know, one, we we try and make it as easy as possible to connect data. And so, you know, on the back end side of things, it's a very complex, you know, process. But. APIs, everybody throws it out there, but it's a really important component of how we effectively help advisors do better at not only connecting their technology, but adopting it better. Now, I'd say this as well. One of the, the things that we did look at is, you know, not every advisor wants to run their own technology. And especially, you know, ones that can be a little bit more complicated, um, not because they're inherently complicated, but because there's a lot of components to running a back office, right? And mm -hmm. so uh, that is one of the foundational reasons why we uh, why we have Orion Portfolio Solutions and 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 Brinker Capital Investments as a way to help advisors drive scale. So, right, uh, I, I think Adam, you know, some in some cases, advisors might recognize that they're not an asset allocator. You know, they 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 need to partner with whether it's a fund company or others to help build out those models and then provide those services. Well, what that ultimately does, is it gives them more opportunity to spend more on the client experience and seeing how we, can we better engage with, you know, an asset map mm -hmm. and fact find and continue to build a better foundation with that client. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. I'm curious, Joe, how, how, you, how you kind of approach that, the question of how does an advisor grow and learn more of what they could do over time and yeah, absolutely. Appreciate the question, Adam. Um, you know, on our side, what we, from an onboarding perspective, from a best practice within CRM perspective, you know, we we have a programmatic process where we do onboarding calls. But, you know, what I would say is the way that we help um, is just kind of advising folks on those best practices. One of them, you know, was a great you know, tip from Alex Shalakian of Lake Avenue Financial, one of our customers. And he's, mm -hmm. he was telling advisors, he's, hey, anytime you meet someone, Anytime you have a new contact, anytime you have a call, put that in CRM. And I think that's sometimes part of the, the behavior I think that needs to be corrected, that you're documenting every call, documenting every note, every time you meet someone and using tools like our mobile app for the iPad or Android devices or iOS, that you meet someone, you take a picture of their business card 
or you put in their contact information, you put in those notes. Um, so that's typically our, our, our suggestion when we're advising um, and walking uh, our new customers through our onboarding process, we take them through a programmatic onboarding uh, process. The first you know, call is usually just a, a, a one hour tour of all the features. On the second call, what we do is we talk about task and process management, um, and we talk through tasks and workflows and setting up workflows. And then the third call, um, usually just for any Q&A. So um, to sum it all up, you know, I would say the way that we help advisors utilize all the tools is just going through a programmatic onboarding process that's part of becoming a new customer of Wealthbox. Yeah, I would I would tend to agree. I, I mean, for us at Asset Map, one of the things we've been committed to is is onboarding every single advisor one on one, and then finding out what they need. Um, I know that actually Ryan has an extraordinary bench for 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 doing this and making available. We've taken a lot of hints from what you guys have done over the years what's worked, where advisors need hand-holding. I mean, as much as we are you know, smart people and experts at supposedly financial advice, we're not uh, technology experts. We need somebody, we want somebody to literally walk us through it, hold our hand, cross the bridge with us to get us to the other side until we're, we feel confident. And I think uh, we've actually broken that down for those advisors listening really into two aspects. One, the technical expectation, how do you actually use the tool but then even the deeper side of it, well, how do you present with this? How do you start better conversations? How do you uncover opportunity? How do you cross sell? How do you bring up different conversations? We've, we've been doing um, what we call a boot camp, which we run four times a year for both uh, people who are in their first six months of advisors, total immersion, four hours for a day uh, remote. And then we do a, a, a two day program with just myself where we talk about how to, how to go generate another 100,000 revenue using these tools. Um, I think it's important that, and I'm just kind of offering this because I've lived this stuff with you as an advisor uh, for those attending. Um, you know, it's it's really, I think the underutilized tools in, um, in CRM tend to be the workflows, right? I think a lot of us have missed or didn't understand how those how those um, resources were, were really available to us in, in tools like Wealthbox. And we tend to use the CRM as a as a Rolodex and a note taker and maybe some collaboration. But it really is, it does become culture to get all of your people to commit to every day entering the things that they're doing into the to the CRM. And that's when it becomes super powerful when you can start actually creating workflows that tell you where things are in the chain of events that you're responsible for executing. It becomes really challenging as your firm creates success. And I know we got to 25, uh, 25 people in our firm, about a billion and a half of AUM, plus a significant life business and corporate. It gets impossible to stay on top of really own your business unless you're starting to use these workflows. And I know certainly for portfolio management and, and the supermarket that you guys have built, it's unbelievable uh, over at Orion and how much you can do. Get really strong, of course, at the core uh, competency that you need from a, a company like Orion and then add on those features, but but don't be afraid to explore them. I think that's that's kind of the best advice I would give is, is learn one system, get it to work in your practice, and then say, okay, what can I do next? What can I do next? And go through those trainings and commit to it. One of the interesting things of running a technology company today is the, the technology is one aspect, but when you zoom out, it's a very small aspect of the overall value because you have to commit to the training and the ongoing learning uh, because we're gonna continue to grow uh, and build new products and services, you're going to want to take advantage of them. Yeah, Adam, if, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll add one, one, one piece of advice too as well. For you know, any, any advisor that's, uh, that's really considering technology, you know, really look at what's going to be most important to, to move your business forward, and not only move it forward, but also maintain it. I, I think that uh, what oftentimes happens is you know, sometimes we can get overwhelmed by the immense amount of choice that we have and how we can adopt all of that, that functionality. And I would just encourage, right, as, as time goes on, you know, as you as you continue to grow, uh, the adoption of technology will probably be driven based off of where you're at in your life cycle as a firm. And do you have the staff to help drive adoption in those areas and ultimately to, you know, to lead, um, you know, to a better outcome for your client? And, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, coming back to, to one of the points I mentioned earlier, you know, if, if um, if your if your objective is to spend more time with clients, but you don't really want to add, you know, uh, a CFA on staff, right? Well, you know, maybe it is important to leverage, uh, you know, a model management that can help, you know, that's somewhat outsourced. But if you do decide to do that, 
then you know the technology becomes a, nat a more natural adoption, right? Because then you have somebody there that can focus on that component of the tech. It doesn't have to all be handled by one individual alone. Yeah, I would tend to agree. Allison, are there any other uh, questions uh, that are coming and that we can address before we wrap up? Yeah, so certainly um, I love the the great idea, Adam. You commented on it in the chat as well, but uh, seeing you know some kind of boot camp using all three products. And to me, that's a little bit about what the final session is going to look like. So we're going to get a little bit more deep into the integrations themselves, the best practices, how you can really uh, make it work to, to streamline things uh, there at your firm. Uh, so certainly look forward to that, Christian. I, I do think it'll be kind of almost a mini boot camp uh, for session three to, to hear from uh, these folks on you know, how they're really, um, you know, seeing it become successful for advisors using all three of our platforms together. Uh, so great question there. Um, I do have a question that's mainly directed to Eddie. Uh, so if, if someone's using the FTJ Orion integration uh, now with both AssetMap and Wealthbox, if there's a swap over to Orion Advisor Services uh, through a network, uh, will that change the integration? So that's not uh, something I would necessarily be able to answer. Uh, is that something you could touch on, Ed? Yeah. So you know, I think, uh, Christian, I understand your, your question here. And in short, no, we, we don't create special packages of integrations. Uh, the integrations are available regardless of, of, you know, where or how you're using Orion. Uh, now, that being said, I want to be cautious. Depending upon the uh, provider that you're working with, if you're going through another third party, uh, it, it's possible that they may limit which integrations you have available depending upon how, you know, um, uh, maybe they require those types of agreements to go through them. Uh, so that, that would be the only thing. But otherwise, no, there won't be any difference to how the integration should operate. Great. Uh, let's see what else we have if I missed anything here. I think it's a great idea. Lots of, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, but I mean, look, if we're going to do that on a boot camp, I'd be curious for all of you that are attending, you know, write in the chat or write in the questions that you, you want to come to this stuff, because I think one of the things we've learned in product is we build what our customers want and demand, right? Sometimes we don't know it doesn't exist yet. Nobody thought about it. Nobody asked for it. So gosh, ask for it. So, you, I mean, we have a pretty robust product feedback um, outlet where we actually, you can vote continuously on things we're considering building. If you haven't participated in that, go to the feedback section at the upper right of of asset map and drop down feedback, you'll see actually what's on our product roadmap. And then you prioritize it. Um, that's, a, that's an important aspect. But things like training, that doesn't get the same, uh, I think, uh, aspect. We have to imagine where you're having challenges. So please uh, let us know either directly here or privately that these are programs that you want and what it would look like. You know, you can be part of this product build too uh, and design the future of what you experience. You know, to that point, Adam, I actually think I'm really excited for the next call because, you know, we're going to have an, uh, an advisor, maybe two Allison Wright joining us to talk about how they're operating with the workflow uh, between the three programs. And I think that will be a great opportunity to kind of segue into, you know, maybe a mini boot camp, right? Where it kind of, yeah. they're, they're outlining that, that experience and, and how it's benefiting their firm. Yeah, so uh, I mentioned in the beginning of the call, everyone, uh, but if you joined a little bit later, the reason how this, you know, kind of all came together was uh, I, I get the pleasure of speaking to a lot of back office folks, a lot of advisors who are, uh, you know, champions of ASIMAP, looking into ASIMAP, and so much overlap between uh, our uh, us over at ASIMAP and Orion and Wealthbox. You know, Wealthbox has only been a integration partner of ours for goodness, uh, maybe less than six months one of the most quickly adopted integrations we've seen. And of course, Orion, and Adam, you might be able to speak to this uh, better than even myself, you know, uh, Orion integration was one of our first and uh, certainly most of uh, one of our most well adopted. And um, mm -hmm. so it was really cool to see Wealthbox kind of catapult into being super well adopted with SMF subscribers really quickly. Uh, and also Orion, uh, one of our long standing integrations. So it really made sense for us. Uh, as a three systems that really work so nicely together to get this call, uh, this series of calls uh, together for you guys to, to check out. There's some, uh, I, I don't know if anybody has any comments. In the, in the absence of speaking, I will speak. Um, but there is a, <laughs> there is a, there's a lot of comments in the questions here. Those are great. We'll take them to heart. Um, thanks for all the shout outs. Um, and I, I agree that, that, that uh, please keep it coming, right? Don't assume that we know what you need. 
Um, sometimes looking at this diagram of the weaving, you know, the dotted line connecting all these tools, it feels like it's not so obvious, but um, I think we can always do better jobs of, of explaining why it's specifically important, why we built it, and how you can use it, how do you wield that in the field um, so that you don't look uh, foolish in front of your clients trying to, you know, do some tech stuff. This is intended in many ways to make your lives easier uh, and faster and more uh, complete. So, uh, so let us please continue to let us know that. Um, Allison, why don't you share with us um, what's coming up next in the dates? I see we're getting a bunch yep. of that. Yeah, so that's that's great. Um, how you guys uh, subscribe to this first session here, uh, you're able to uh, do it the same way for the second two. So uh, coming up next week, and it's every Thursday for three weeks, three weeks in a row at 3 p.m. Eastern. So we tried to keep it really consistent in that regard. Uh, so the next up, uh, again, will be um, – uh, representatives from each company, Asset Map, Orion, and Wealthbox, and also a subscriber or two using all three, uh, talking about how they've had success with the, the systems together. And that's again next Thursday, the 29th at 3 p.m. Eastern. And then the final session uh, will be exactly one week after that, the following Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, again, uh, how you registered for this one will allow you to register for all three. Uh, so I know a lot of you have already done that. We've got a great um, lineup and uh, already a ton of registrants for the second two sessions. And uh, again, 3 p.m. Eastern, three Thursdays in a row. And um, we, we absolutely look forward to having you on the next one because certainly hearing how um, active subscribers are using uh, all three systems together will be super exciting. And uh, we'd love to have our champions join us on these calls. Cool. Let's see what else we've got question wise. Yeah, the same. Make sure link. we didn't miss anything. Yep. And if you can't find that for any reason, you can simply just email support at assetmap.com and we'll send you the link. If you really are, can't find it, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we're, we're happy to get you there. We want to get as many people there as need to be there. So uh, if anybody's looking for a quick solution, just type support at assetmap.com in your email and you'll get some answers. Um, okay. Uh, with that, Allison, why don't we why don't we close this rodeo, and we'll look forward to seeing everybody. Uh, at Absolutely. The next See you guys next week for uh, having some subscribers on talking about their experiences at Asimap, Orion, and Wealthbox.